In the theory of evolution, life is thought of as having evolved from a primordial soup. What exactly is this soup? How did it get there? Well, early in Earth's history, the surface of the Earth was covered in volcanoes and was generally very hot. Whilst at the same time, the surface of the Earth was also being bombarded by the debris left over from planetary formation. However, over time, the Earth cooled and gases which had come from deep within the Earth combined with the material from space, resulting in both a thick atmosphere and also the oceans forming. This time in our solar system's history, the sun was slightly cooler than it is currently, but a high proportion of greenhouse gases and the heat from the Earth itself resulted in temperatures which are not too different from today. And one of the major factors though, that would have been different is there was virtually no free oxygen floating about. It's not to say there was no oxygen, just that it was bound up with hydrogen in the form of water, with iron to create iron oxide, with carbon to create carbon dioxide. It also meant there was no ozone layer around the Earth as well. At this stage, the Earth was totally devoid of life. That doesn't mean that nothing was happening. The Earth would have had thunderstorms present, powerful lightning bolts, thermal vents and volcanoes would have brought heat and new minerals from beneath the Earth, and different levels of the ocean would have created tremendous pressure the ocean themselves provided a watery medium for a whole host of chemical reactions to take place. It's these kinds of circumstances that are reproduced in part by the Miller-Urey experiment, where water, methane, ammonia and hydrogen, all of which were present in the early earth, then heated and subject to electrical sparks, stimulating the lightning on the early earth. This experiment was run for a week, and after that time, some other basic chemicals were then able to form. Significant amounts of larger molecules like hydrogen cyanide, maldehyde, and glycine, and also a few amino acids. Later experiments using the same basic setup create even more complex molecules, including over 20 different amino acids, basically the building blocks for proteins. So our theory is, these chemicals can be created in a few days in a lab with a tiny amount of chemicals, but the Earth, over millions of years, with billions of tons of chemicals to work with, nothing to impede the amino acid creation, will create masses of these chemicals. However, amino acid production isn't actually a one-way process. Ultraviolet light or extreme heat can return the amino acids back to their building block chemicals. Some of these amino acids bind together to form proteins that are far more stable or resistant to disruption. This way we have a form of chemical evolution or survival of the strongest chemicals. Those chemical formations which are the most stable and most likely to survive, those weaker chemicals would be broken down. The result will be the oceans of the earth will be full of amino acids and proteins. And this water rich with amino acids and proteins which is known as the primordial soup.